if you're looking to make a heat distortion effect like this using the shader in your Unity game with the ability to customise it as you want to, you should continue watching this tutorial. So let's look at our current setup. We have um, a main camera and we have a white square and a lava screenshot so you have a good idea of what this will look like. This shader we're going to make will apply to everything that your camera can see and I wanted to add a little white square as well as a cool screenshot from Sonic Mania to demonstrate that. So what you firstly want to do is you want to right click and go to UI and then go to raw image and by doing so you will also end up creating a canvas and this is important because we're going to be essentially rendering what the camera sees to a render texture and then displaying that render texture on a raw image which will cover the entire screen and for your raw image you want to set the x and y to be zero and then set the width and the height to be equal to the size of your game display. So for me, it's 720p. And now we just have a white screen for now, but don't worry, that'll be changed in a moment. Then in your assets folder, you want to right click, go to create, then go to render texture and call this game view and set this to be 1280 by 720p or whatever you want your game resolution to be. You can leave the rest of the settings to be the same, but you can obviously customize them to fit your game. After that, you want to then go to your main camera and for target texture here, you want to drag and drop your render texture into it. Then for the raw image, the target texture also make that the render texture. Now we can see our game view again. However, it's going for a render texture and we can now edit that render texture with a shader to create the heat effect and this way it impacts everything that the camera can see. But if you want to have like a UI that's not impacted by the heat effect, you can do that because we're only going to be modifying what the render texture has and stuff on the canvas won't be part of that render texture so it won't be impacted. So the next thing you want to do is you want to right click, go to create and then go to shader, then go to unlit shader and call it something like heat shader. Then you want to open it up. Now hit Control A and hit the delete key. So this tutorial is not going to be covering how the shader works. So there's a link in the description below with all of the shader code. I want you to copy and paste it into this file. Once you've copy and pasted it, you're going to have something that looks like this. So these are your properties. Think of them as serialized or public fields of a game object. And we can essentially customize values that will impact the shader. Like how much distortion do we want and how quick do we want the distortion effect to be. This subshader stuff is quite standard at the start with your app data and V2F. And these variables here just match what's up here. Our V2F vert function in the shader transforms vertex positions from object space to clip space, preparing them for the rendering on the screen. And it also modifies the UV coordinates to include time-based vertical shifts for dynamic distortion effects. By adding a calculated value to the UV coordinates, it creates a moving effect, simulating the visual distortion caused by the heat waves. And so we can see the hot air rising. And then our fixed tall frag function uses the distorted UV coordinates to sample a distortion texture, which we'll go into in a moment. And then it applies this texture's red and green channels, scaled by a distortion factor, to the main texture's sampling coordinates. This process alters the appearance of the main texture, creating the final visual effect of heat distortion that makes the texture appear as if viewed through shimmering hot air. And that's it for the shader. So again, it is in the description below for you to copy and paste. Now let's go back to Unity. So you might be wondering, Max, why do you have two sprites called Heat Noise 2 and Heat 3? Basically, these are our noise textures that our shader is going to use. And a noise is random or semi-random variation in data, often visual, used in graphics to create textures that appear more natural and less uniform. In this shader, a noise-based distribution texture is used to variably alter texture coordinates to simulate organic fluctuating distortions like those seen in heat waves. 
And there's an eye up in the corner if you want to know how to make one. It's really easy to do in paint.net. It literally takes a couple of minutes at most. However, there'll also be a link in the description below where you can download the ones I use in this tutorial if you want to follow along exactly. So with that, we're going to right click, go to create, go to material. We're going to call it heat mat. Then we click on heat mat. We go up to where it says standard and we're going to type in heat and we see our seamless heat wave effect shader here. So we click on it. Then we're going to drag and drop one of our heat noises into the distortion texture. And then we're going to set some values for our distortion. I'm going to do 0.002 and 0.8 as I like that effect. Then we're going to go to our raw image. And for the material, we're going to drag and drop heat mat onto it. Then we're going to save our work and we're going to press play. And as you can see, there is a heat distortion effect. It's quite quick, so I'm going to set the speed to be 0.4, 0.2. I quite like that. Let's put another zero before the two in this. All right, that's too far. Let's go to 0.1. And as you can see, we got a nice little heat effect. So let's go to 0 0.8. Let's do, let's try 0 0.4, 0 0.1. And as you can see, we have a very subtle, but we have a hot air rising effect. Now let's change the heat texture. So we're going to drag in heat free into here instead. And as you can see, it changed a bit, but it still works. Now, now let's see what happens. So we drag and drop a screenshot of Lava Reef Zone. Well, as you can see, there is still a heat distortion effect. It's just a bit different. But anyway, thanks for watching this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials.